So welcome back to Zero to CC guys. David is just getting his car moved out of the way so we can get this trailer unloaded and go through all the goodies he picked up from Ali yesterday. Um, but it was just doing E39 things and decided not to start, but we got the jump pack on it. So hopefully should be good to go. What the? Oh, that man. battery that is definitely charged, isn't it? Yeah, it hundred percent is. It started the M5 today. Actually, that makes no, that's pretty much exactly how it turned over before I plugged the, yeah, I'll disconnect it and try it again. Oh, it's a bit slower. For Christ's sake. We'll come back to you once we've got the car started. So you did actually, you started this up you know, three hours ago, you moved it a little bit. Yeah, and it was left overnight and it didn't, didn't drain the battery, it was fine. Let's see what's going on. So 7.9. Today it's battery drain went from it's gone to 7.92. Starting the car to under eight volts in like four hours. That's swam. Whatever starts sucking the power starts sucking it quickly. It's very sucky. Very sucky. <laughs> but it won't even jump start. That means that's just... weird. I mean this battery started the M5 today. What's that got? 12.3. I wonder if these crappy jump leads aren't transferring enough power to it. They spin fine in the past. I'll hook it directly to the battery. Okay, so I've just put the M5 battery in there rather than using the jumper leads. So we know this should be fine. Fingers crossed. words we've got the one that we did the Sydney trip on on charge we have a collection of e39 batteries um, but that's the one we did the Sydney trip on that was fine the newest century one which no, he's not there but he hasn't had that for very long uh, but that's the one that died last week oh, it's just a pain in the bum anyway we'll get this moved and get this trailer unloaded so, we've got the trailer up, we're going to get it unloaded. Let's see what goodies you got. We'll lay it all out and then start going through the boxes, yeah? Sounds good to me. The last clip you would have seen was actually just past midnight last night and some of the battery gear, the camera gear ended up going flat. So we resumed it this morning. And unfortunately I couldn't wait to have a dig into some of the boxes. So I have seen it, but Andrew said we really should show you guys and yeah, some of, you, some of you guys have been following on along with the journey and want to see what, what we have got. So I'll quickly dig in. Now this first box here is really just stereo gear. The M5, some of you guys might not know that it, um, they have like a premium sound option. And so these massive speakers at the bottom are actually the factory subwoofers which mount to the parcel shelf, I believe. And Ali removed all that for weight reduction. Exactly, yeah. And he also, all oh, this gear obviously isn't factory BMW, it's all aftermarket. And I think Ali, before he went full race mode with the weight reductions, ended up putting a big aftermarket good stereo in. So we've got big aftermarket Alpine amplifiers. We, unfortunately there is only one crossover. But still, crossover, lots of speaker wire. The aftermarket head unit as well, somewhere here. So that's like, that's a Android doubled in BMW style or E39 specific head unit, which would be pretty cool because yeah, you can run aftermarket apps and stuff on it. That's all pretty good to get. A new grill, which will be quite handy as my one got damaged in the crash. What's in that one? That this, box? this box was, we didn't actually get to look in this at Ali's and it was quite heavy. It turns out these are the factory, the standard front brakes, oh. which they're actually surprisingly uh, big and got some, got some weight in them. But yeah, obviously Ali put those massive eight pot things on, or six pot, whatever they are. And these are the rotors. Now these don't look like OEM rotors. I couldn't see a, um, I can't see a brand on them. But they are slotted and they've actually got heaps of meat on them. There's no lip or anything. So that's pretty handy. A factory M5 brake kit. 
Could maybe put it on my other 540 or something. Yeah, and pull that. That's a good idea. So you got, moving on, we got the two original air boxes, which if you were ever going to make it NA again, yeah, you would need them. Well, if he, you've got everything to go back to NA. He's yeah. kept everything from the Supercharger kit in store. In there are the two maps and everything, so it was good he actually held on to that sort of stuff. Because I'd imagine if you did want to go back to NA, they would be a nightmare to try and get a hold of. All very expensive. Factory speakers, all good, except missing a front one for some reason. I know someone that's got a spare E39 yeah. parts car, which might be helpful. And you've got some brand new diff bushes, which will be handy. When we drove mine, it felt okay, but I guess maybe they're a weak spot or something. I was just preempting and failing. Some spare fog lights. This was quite cool. This is like the supercharger kit. Service kit. Supercharger service kit, yeah. So you heaps of these little bottles of oil for the supercharger. So you actually replace the oil, just like you do an engine, which is pretty good. And yeah, some more sensors and all that sort of stuff. That is actually the ESS software and tuning kit. So that is actually how you flash the car with the tune. The ESS tunes. Yeah. Interesting. So that'll be quite handy to play with. Um, whether you can plug that in and maybe do some data logging as well or get any extra information from the car, or if it is just a, a simple, a one process on and off sort of tune thing. Something that I, to me, I thought was quite important, getting the seats. 100%. Not that... The race seats are awesome, but maybe if you were doing a long trip, you probably might not want to do it in those race seats, so it's wicked that you've got these to put back in. That's it. I, yeah, it's good to have them, and they're actually in pretty good condition. They were covered up with the plastic wherever it's gone, and it looks like maybe a bit of moisture gone into that one, so I have to give that one a bit of a clean today, a bit of a freshen up. But overall, they're pretty good. Got all the trims out of the boot, like a different... every piece of trim, and it's all in good nick, which is awesome. Yeah. Ali really went race mode, didn't he, to strip, strip all the weight. The bonnet, also pretty good condition. I do like, I like that colour so much, the carbon Schwartz, the carbon black. Good under that light, yeah, the blue nice. fleck through it. And that can, we can pretty much put that straight back on. So we might be able to get the front looking like it should do pretty quickly. That will help because, yeah, that was a big thing. OEM rear mufflers, again, massive weight saving. They are quite heavy. OEM catalytics, cat, cats, catalytic converters. You'll definitely be wanting to put them back on. I'll, I'll, just, I'll just put them, because it's got high flow ones at the moment, but I'll also put the stock ones on. And I'll put the stock mufflers on. And I might put some more mufflers on as well. Because <laughs> I hate how noisy it is. Not really. Uh, some hub centric, Ethan 9 specific IBAC wheel spaces, which are pretty cool. It's already pretty stanced at the moment. Like, I quite like its fitment. So I don't know what I'll do with these. But I think we should try and fit it one day just to see full stance boy effect. Get it. Get the rear poking nice. That was the oil that Ali used. He also mentioned, he also went through his like service intervals or service regimen, and it was pretty strict. So that's good to know, and that is very expensive oil as well, so that's nice. Yeah, he said he was doing the oil every 5,000 Ks. Yeah, and he said that the, the... $200 a bottle? And the S62s love this stuff, so every 5,000 Ks he'd drop it and it was still golden to look at, which is bloody awesome. That's it. And I think that's a, quick, a quick gloss over. There are, I mean, you've got lots of little cables, lots of little trim bits. I mean, they're not that interesting. The only other thing to mention is, oh yeah, the, the wheel thing, that's definitely not exciting. And stop. do you have the logbooks? Also got the logbooks as well. Uh, this is not overly exciting to look at, but we are able to do some digging in there, and believe it or not, its previous owner actually lived in a suburb five minutes away from here. That's gnarly. Well, actually, it was the guy that bought it in 2004. Yes. And going through the manual, it looks like it was sold for a month as a demo vehicle to someone, to a business, and then one month later, it got sold to this guy, and it looks like he owned it for quite a long time. A long time, yeah. Um, and we're and yeah. we literally just around the corner from us. Yeah, so we probably have seen this car at some point. Yeah, because yeah, we used to look out for Ethan Nines and Fives and ugh, lose our mind. But that was very interesting, though. Also, its service history up to two hundred and twenty thousand kilometers or something was stamped BMW at BMW dealers. Bang, 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 bang. So that was good. And then it actually went to a to BM Records in Acacia Ridge, um, and there was two stamps from them. So, interesting enough, anyone knows anyone at BM Records that might know the car? Yeah, um, yeah. There was no names or anything in there, but it was still good, awesome to find some of that, some more of that history. Also, the spare key Ali had as well, which you just don't get with an auction buy. So that was bloody awesome to get our hands on that. All in all, it's pretty good, and I think I'm leaning now even more towards wanting to repair this M5. We've got all the original parts to make it an M5. If anybody's funny about that, and it was a local car. It would just be good to just keep it going, regardless of whether it's the cheapest option 
it might be our favourite option. Yeah, and speaking of cheapest options, we really need to get it to a panel shop now so they can assess it properly and go from there. So that might be a job for this week. All right, well, that's a quick look at all these M5 parts and why we drove to Sydney in 27 <laughs> or 28 hours. Um, that's about it, isn't it? I think so. Guys, seeing all this stuff, let us know what you think. Let us know if we're sitting on a gold mine of classic M5 bits or we drove to Sydney for no reason. <laughs> anyway, look, uh, thank you very much for watching and what's the next video on this car going to be? It might be. Well, actually, I need to look into... We need to take for another drive. Yeah. In that last clip, when we got back to the house, we're like, it doesn't feel like 600 horsepower. We need to make sure it's actually boosting in case it's got a crack in the intake manifold or something. Yeah, because that does happen with, with those S62s when you start boosting them. So we just need to have a play with it and yeah, sort that out. Yeah, Ali made that very clear, actually. He's got a spare plenum. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, all right, guys. Thanks again. Peace.